Okay, people, we have to talk about Lake Base from Databricks. People are furious. I mean, let's be real. The future is here, and it is eating us up and spitting our bones out. And the Lake Base is here, and the internet went crazy. I mean, just when you thought the Lake House was the latest and greatest concept, and technology not to be outdone anytime soon. Databricks went and had their little party and they announced a lake base and there's a lot of mad people and it's pretty funny. I mean, it was funny when they announced lake base, which by the way, is managed OLAP Postgres at scale inside the Databricks platform. We'll talk about that more, but man, when they released that, people were mad and went crazy. I could just hear the clickety clack of all the fingers and all the CTOs and middle managers just eating this thing up. They are going to adopt Lake Base. It's the best thing ever. And I think it's pretty cool. A lot of people said, hey, called follow, pulled the red flag and said, hey, follow man, what's going on? This is not new, but let's get into it. I mean, let's be honest, Lake Base has been a decade in the making. That's the truth. What is Lake Base? Databricks announced a Lake Base. It is a fully managed Postgres OLAP engine that lives inside the Databricks platform. You can provision it as a Databricks instance. So like it's a new type of compute. It's Postgres row level semantic transactions. It's basically meaning this is a Postgres database that scales infinitely, quote unquote. It's basically a Postgres cluster inside your analytics platform. So it's Postgres compatible. It's managed change data capture. They provide a unified governance. So it's inside the Databricks platform with your new catalog. So it's tied into all the governance and security. It has Lakehouse hooks. So of course it, you know, you can hook it up to Databricks apps, feature engineering, serving, SQL warehouses, all that kind of thing. And it's elastic scale, you know, it separates storage and compute. So the idea behind Lake Base is now you have right this OLTP online transactional super low level response time, but it's at scale, aka, you know, Postgres cluster hidden back there somewhere. But it's kind of like simplified and it's just like sits there and you can use it however you want. So again, why would people go fits over this? Why would one side be saying this is the best thing ever and the other people saying, hey, you suck, this is not a big deal. What is what is going on? I mean, to get some context on this, let's just do a little history lesson. Okay, let's talk about OLAP versus OLTP, so analytics versus online transactional processes. These two have always been at odds since the beginning of time, and a lot of companies and platforms run both of these things at the same time. I mean, the story begins with the advent of relational databases, SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL, Postgres, right? And that's kind of where the classic data warehouse came along. The roots of our current lake house started there in concepts like Kimball's data warehouse toolkit. You know, we didn't have tools like we have today. You had to use SQL Server, Postgres, Oracle, whatever to run your OLAP analytics data warehouse. And that was really basically data modeling things different inside those systems designed for OLTPs, designed for low latency transactional database, not necessarily analytics. So we solved that problem with data modeling. Circa 2007, you know, the world's going full bore on SQL Server, everything, OLTP databases, they are where all the transactional processing took place. And we used data modeling to shift into an OLAP mindset that was well suited to, suited to serve up analytics on a large scale. But, you know, there's only a few people running Hive and Pig and HDFS. It's not that many people were doing it. You know, they were making the SQL Server work. That simply wasn't enough from a storage or compute viewpoint. And that's where the data lake came in. You know, S3 got popular. People started pounding in Parquet files, which got super popular at that time. Avro, CSV, JSON files, dumping them in S3, data lake, baby. Put Spark, BigQuery, Athena on top of it. And now we have an analytics system. Terabytes of messy data. We can crunch it and spend some money. Then came the lake house and it saved us from that. You know, Iceberg, Delta Lake, Databricks came on the scene. It was like, yeah, now this is, this is screaming. We don't have to have anything to do with Postgres for analytics. And this is great. It scales. It's fast. You know, forever the line between the OLAP and OLTP has been clear. And now... Lake base muddies that water. I mean, here's a little image for all you hobbits who didn't already know it, but you know, if you don't know that, you probably shouldn't be watching this channel. I mean, let's be honest, recently, you know, we've had like 
Aurora clusters, things like that, but things have been pretty different, you know? So what is lake base? Lake base is trying to narrow that gap. It's trying to narrow that gap and solve business problems, I think. A lot of people complaining about lake base, which I understand. It's not really anything new. It's the implementation. It's new. They're presenting it in a new way that provides business value. That's what they're trying to do. So if you want OLTP, you want OLAP, Databricks is saying we can give you both of those inside our platform. I mean, it's obviously smart, right? I mean, when you do architectural drawing in the past, you would have those things totally separate. You would maybe spin up an Aurora cluster in AWS over here, and then you've got your Databricks or Snowflake over here. What Databricks is saying now is like, hey, those boxes can be, those two things can be inside the same box. They don't have to be different, you know? So they're trying to break down barriers between data and increase innovation and reduce technical barriers that's what lake base does so again traditional architectures is a lot of like pumping data in between back and forth between postgres and delta lake or iceberg back and forth etl pipelines da, 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 right i mean that's what we've been doing for 20 years lake base they're saying you know these things sit next to each other you can treat them inside this databricks system like the same thing they're just a different data source you can you want the low latency transactional thing like here's your lake based postgres thingy and you want to do your analytics at petabyte scale here's your lake house thingy and they work together and it's almost like using the same tool except they have different use cases and you know that's got obvious benefits i mean i don't really feel like going into technical overview of lake base i will probably do that at some point it's on my list i'll get there but basically if you're interested databricks offers lake bases like uh type of instance compute right you could start it and run it it's gonna be expensive boy you know that i mean it does have some limitations they find print tells us it's got like a two terabyte max for an instance i don't know that's actually not a lot of data that's not going to work for a lot of people and also a thousand concurrent connections will turn some people off i don't know what to say i'm sure that'll go up i mean the type of people that use this stuff you'd think they'd want you know something a little bit better but whatever we'll see how it goes of course databricks made it easy to sync data to and from unity catalog tables so again like i talked about breaking down the barriers and going between the lake house and the lake base is super easy you know and again you can access your now postgres cluster database thingy with your sql editor with a databricks notebook with external tools like you could with anything else like you can just treat it like a you know use some python get a postgres package and connect to it like you could or you can just play around in a databricks notebook i mean that's kind of cool i mean the cost let's not talk about the cost man 40 cents per dbu hour plus the storage cost oh boy man hide your wallets kids dang it it's expensive but again is it really that expensive I don't know if you're already in an Aurora database or something or running a Postgres cluster that's exactly not like a cakewalk and it's expensive anyways. So I suppose if you're a CTO or some engineering leader, you could look at that and say, hey, this architecture is way simpler. We're going to delete all sorts of code. This is going to increase innovation all right here. You know, I get it. You know, it's going to be worth it to some people. I mean, I did a little survey when I wrote about Lake Base. I'll leave a note to a link to that Substack post that I wrote about it and it's pretty interesting. I was like, what do you think the future of Lake Base is? Most people are like, I don't know. 50% of the people that took it said, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, another quarter of them said, nah, it's not going to happen. And then another quarter said, give it to me. So the world seems split. Who knows what will happen? Lake Base is very much a database product. Again, they're just making it super easy for Databricks people to do stuff. Is it earth shattering? Yes and no. You know, scalable Postgres clusters have been around for a long time. In this format, not really. That You know, this is new. They're the first ones to say, dude, look at it. It's right here next to your lake house. Like, these things are basically can talk to each other. You can use my platform and do massive analytics at scale, but you can also use, you know, this Postgres cluster to do low latency stuff, and it's right here. And, yeah, I get it, man. This is more of like a business thing, an innovation thing. That's what Databricks is doing. They want to provide you a one-stop shop to do everything, and they were adding OLTP as a piece of that shop. That's what Lake Base is. What do you think? Let me know.